We want to bring you into another cold case here in Russellville, Arkansas. We're working on Samantha Hopper, who, 19 years old at the time, also went missing with her 22-month-old daughter, and she was eight months pregnant. Today's episode, we want to thank Omaze for bringing us in and giving this opportunity to travel across the U.S., work on these cold cases. We're going to be talking about Omaze a little bit later on in the episode because they are giving you the opportunity to win a six-bedroom, five-bath home in Orlando, Florida for $1 million, and we'll be touching on that a little bit later on. But let me bring you into the case for what it is that we're actually working on with Samantha. There's little information out there, but what we do know is that she was 19 at the time. She went missing September 11th of 1998. She was supposed to be meeting up with a friend to go to a concert over in Little Rock, Arkansas. She was driving a blue Ford Tempest. Best my knowledge, she never did meet up with her friend and she left her mom's house around 2, 2.30 a.m. is my understanding. If any of my details are wrong, you know, please make sure that you leave a comment down below so that way we can continue to help one another because, you know, while Sam and I and Dan are out here, working you know boots on the ground in the water and checking underwater like i've said before you know this is a really we're all in this together so i appreciate you being here as we give you more information throughout the day but to get started let's head over across the lake by the first boat ramp and then we're going to follow this entire levee all the way back to the boat ramp where we just parked so let's get this day started check out this boat ramp because it's right near highway 40 but we also have another boat ramp off of this other little highway that's coming up coming up to the highway 40 intersection just on the other side of the bridge that we're going to check out here and then we're going to run the entire bayou along this road so it gives us a good starting point to bring you into the day let's uh, start doing some sonar If you've never been with us before, we want to first bring you into the world of sonar and what is it we're looking for and how we start our searches. So first of all, we're using the Garmin with the live scope. So you can actually see, you know, there's a fish swimming by right there on the, on the bottom, 12 feet deep. And so you're seeing pretty much whatever happens in real time, that's this one. Now this one over here with the hummingbird, we use the side scan, which is down below. And this one is more of a picture in time. So this is what has already happened and it records the data for us. So we can actually scroll back up and identify if we miss anything, we can zoom in on it. And a few things that we're looking for on here. The first thing is you'll see the black water column. And so here's our boat in the middle. We're casting 75 feet to the right, 75 feet to the left, but anything black is from the boat to the bottom. So you'll see, you know, six feet here. And so that's roughly six feet there. So you see 18, 36, 54, 75. And so that kind of gives you an idea of the water column. This block over here, that's gonna be the shoreline because we're close enough to it that we were hitting part of what was out of the water. Now this one here is our down imaging with that one. Right now we're at six feet. So anything that's water related is gonna be black and then it'll show the bottom. So it's casting straight down, doesn't do much of a beam, but this one shoots a beam, like I said, 75 left, 75 right. I don't know what that was. It was three feet tall on live. And that was a pretty big fish, but it didn't show up on my down imaging at all. <laughs> and it's a 20 year old you know, cinnamon. That was really weird. Was it like square shaped like a car? Yeah, I don't know the length of it. Because uh, I kind of watched it, I kind of went fast. So we'll hit it at a different angle. You can kind of see where, like, where our bubbles were at. So we know that we can just cross over our path. Oh, it's a tree. That's what it is. It's a tree laying down. All right, false alarm. All right, boat ramp number two has been cleared. The GPS coordinates that uh, somebody sent us on Google Earth. In fact, Dan will splash that up on screen right now so you can see the exact location of those GPS coordinates. And then I actually, Dan, while you were in the RV, a bass boater that was setting into the water, I asked him if he had seen any cars underwater in this lake. He said that while he is not on sonar himself, on his sonar, um, that he has seen pictures along this levee over here on this highway that we're passing. So we're gonna do a nice thorough search on that one. It's still early enough in the day. We think uh, we can clear this completely. Let's just hit both sides of this 
and I'll post it in cars. circling the very end of the first side of the levee. With that, we had like four trees along the way, no cars. Let's uh, pick up the sonar dam and around the other side. Good. Some other things that uh, we do know, um, I don't feel like she ran away. And I don't feel like she left town. I don't feel like she left her other daughter behind. And the reason why I feel that way, Dan, is because she was working, I want to say at Waffle House, because the news story I saw, like, flashed Waffle House there. Could have been where she was working, I don't know. But what they did say is that she did not pick up her last check. She didn't cash her last check. And if somebody was going to be running away, they would take as much cash, clothes, and whatever that they could take with them. So running away, in my opinion, 100% out of the question. Late at night though, you know, so are we dealing with a late night accident, you know, and did she fall asleep, end up in a body of water somewhere, or did something more sinister happen? Now for me personally, right now, I'm not leaning towards the sinister side of any of this, and the reason being is you would really have to hate somebody in order to take out the pregnant mom as well as the daughter. And I think the daughter was, I hear different stories on this one, Dan. I don't know if the daughter she had with her in the car at the time was 18 months old or if she was 22 months old. I've seen different news press releases on both of that. Her daughter's name, Courtney, that was with her. And then she has another daughter that is a, you know, full grown adult now. And she was a few years older than the youngest that was with her. And with that one, she has only ever known her mom and has memories from pictures when she was younger. Which is, you know, it's, it's kind of sad. And I've seen her, you know, talk about never knowing her mom. You know, but her mom, seeing her mom relive, you know, the loss of, her mom just want to know. I mean, all family want to know, but especially her mom. So if anybody has any additional information to help give us on this case, please leave, you know, comments down below. We do get to that. Uh, where we will see them even more though, if you have like something big, big, make sure that you send us a Facebook message. So that way when we come out to look further, if we don't find her today, we need your help. We want to thank today's episode sponsor is Omaze. They have sponsored some of our cold cases in the past and they are stepping in again to help us with this cold case by bringing us to Russellville, Arkansas. Now with this one today, you do have the opportunity to win a six bedroom, five bath home in Orlando, Florida, or if you don't want to move to Orlando, guess what? They have the option for you to take $1 million in cash instead. Through their partnership with CAF America, donations will help build out and enhance a state-of-the-art epilepsy monitoring unit at the Orlando Health Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. And with us working with the Samantha Hopper case today with an 18 month old, as well as her being pregnant, it just made sense for us to partner with them on this particular episode. So for your chance to win a stunning new home in Orlando or your chance at $1 million, please go to home.omaze.com forward slash AWP to enter to win. I don't think it's a 
car. It's like a whole graveyard. Dude. We're just like out in the middle of nowhere where nothing is out here, man. Yeah, we've, we've seen like nothing along this entire thing. And then suddenly, all of that just pops up. Huh. Wait, we have the drone. Can you put the RV on Let's it? do it. All right. Yeah, everything's straight in front of you. So I handed over the controller to Jared. He actually knows that I <laughs> use this maybe. Well, I've driven it before, yeah, yeah. once or twice. But you're you're coming up on some stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna get out of this little silt cloud here. I don't know who was down there before, Dan. <laughs> I mean, stirred up just a little bit of silt. That's all right. It looked like a uh, piece of concrete, what it kind of looked like. I'm not quite sure. I'm on another one right now. Yeah, and it looks like concrete to what it looks like. Huh. Yeah, definitely concrete. I mean, I'm going right along the side of it here. I don't know why it would be this far out. Maybe it was just when they were doing the levee or something. Just initially somebody just took a dump truck load of something and dumped it over there. Huh. Maybe, oh, you know what? It almost looks like uh, the old bridge beams. The concrete beams is what it kind of looks like. In my opinion, it's not wood. Definitely looks concrete. It's not a car. Not, it's not a car. And that, Dan, is how you use a drone. Now watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up. Watch this. Nice work, Jared. Thank you. <laughs> If you guys are interested in fly fish, we do have a link in the description down below. I like that name. Second side of the uh, levee is now done, and I mean, for the most part, I gotta be honest with you, like just scanning and being in the boat. I mean, it's nice being in the boat, but it's also like long, cold days. But I want to know from you, like we are actually like recording a lot of this stuff, and uh, we have this for some of you. Do you want to see like everything underwater? Like we did like another channel and just put this stuff over there for the technical side of it, and just like for hours of this footage. Leave me a comment down below. I think you could actually do a poll on YouTube. We can do a poll? I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I yeah. don't even know. We're gonna see if we can do a poll. If we can, the poll is right there. But also, if you are enjoying our videos and you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe because it helps the YouTube and the Facebook algorithm. We appreciate being here. We're not done yet because we still have one more boat ramp to go check out as we circle around and wrap up the day today. Fingers crossed, maybe that's the one. Well, Dan, that wraps up the final boat dock. I don't know where to take it from here. You know, it's a, it's about getting out on the water. It's about bringing awareness to Samantha Hopper, to her daughter Courtney, to, you know, her eight month old, she was eight months pregnant at the time. So here's where we need to ask you to leave your comments, send us emails, get a, get a hold of us on Facebook Messenger. If you have any tips to this case, we really want to hear about it. We also want to thank Omaze for being a part of this today. Without them, we would not have been in Russellville working this cold case of Samantha Hopper. So do me a favor, if you would like to be entered into and a chance to win a six bedroom, 
five bath home or one million dollars, be sure to check out home.omaze.com forward slash AWP for your chance to enter. On that note, if you've not done so already, please subscribe, share, comment. It really helps us out. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Later, later. Bye-bye.